Hey guys, welcome back to Horse 2 Cinema. Today's the day I'm finally going to be reviewing John Wick Chapter 4, which is the new film by Chad Stahelski. Um, just right after my little vacation hiatus, I'm back. Uh, I got to see the movie on Wednesday and I'm finally putting out a review today. As the title obviously suggests is that this is the fourth installment in the John Wick franchise. With the price on his head ever increasing, legendary hitman John Wick takes his fight against the high table global as he seeks out the most powerful players in the underworld from New York to Paris to Japan to Berlin. I really love the John Wick movies. Um, I think they're some of the best action movies of the 21st century. And I'm always surprised to hear that most people tend to like the first one the best. I do really like the grounded nature of the first one, but I way prefer the direction that they went in chapters two and three. Chapter two in particular, I think is like a near perfect exploration of uh, this crime world where uh, John is simultaneously running away from it and at the same time he kind of can't get enough of it. And I think chapter 3 is a really good follow-up to that. But in, when we're talking about chapter 4, I think the first thing that I would have to say and that most people would probably have to say is that it's just so strange that this one exists in the same universe as the first one. The first one to me just felt like a direct-to-video action movie, but done with a little bit higher of a budget and a lot better craft involved. And this one, Chapter 4, is a full-on epic. I mean, it, for, for, for one, it opens like with this sequence that is very knowingly invoking Lawrence of Arabia, so it kind of sets the tone for the movie. And the scale of which the movie goes after that opening sequence I think is just unmatched by anything else in the series. There are so many characters, locations, set pieces throughout this. And what I really found to be really um, interesting is that, the fi is that despite all of these different locations and characters and everything involved, the filmmakers really do take their time, for the most part, to flesh everything out, to just make sure that all of these different ingredients are going to be impactful. The opening sequence in Japan itself feels like it could be the climax of any of the other movies, um, and then of course the Berlin set piece in the middle of the movie just completely blows it out of the water, and then at the end, somehow, they manage to top it with the Paris set piece. In many ways, and I think a lot of people have talked about this, this sort of feels like top action stars and stuntmen from all around the world assembling to sort of create one final showdown to sort of give a statement of what their craft is all about. I mean, you have like Asian martial arts masters like Hiroyuki Sonata, as well as uh, direct-to-video kings like Scott Atkins. But I have to say, and I think a lot of people will agree with this, Donnie Yen is absolutely the standout performance here. I mean, for one, it's just a really cool, like, pulpy idea to make this, you know, blind assassin. Uh, but, but also, it feels like the writer's going, it, it'd be too easy to just put Donnie Yen as a regular character in this movie. We need to, like, impair him in some way so that he has a challenge, not only, you know, as his character, but also particularly in the action scenes. And it's a huge challenge, but he does it. Yen finds a way to still make his fighting style innovative. And you can clearly tell that the way he fights this character, you know, it, it, he's fighting with his impairment in mind. It's very clear. One thing that I love about all the John Wick movies is how they use humor. They're all fairly funny, but everything that's funny in them is played completely straight. It's cheeky, it's self-aware, but it's not wallowing in that self-awareness to the point where it destroys the tension or the gravity in the action movie. Which I've talked about on this channel, I think it's a problem that far too many movies today suffer from. I mean, you can look at Marvel, you can look at movies like Bullet Train, for example. Um, yeah, I mean, the, it's just night and day when you, when you compare one of those to the John Wick films. And in terms of the humor, Chapter 4 is no exception. Um, I thought Scott Atkins was a real standout here in terms of that. He plays like this fat kingpin, you know, crime lord that uh, John Wick has to fight at one point. Uh, but again, it's, it's, it's played relatively straight because during their fight, yes, there's a lot of gags and everything, but they're played straight to the point where the fight still has, you know, emotional weight for John Wick. And, um, you know, there, there, there is a brutality that still comes through despite all the, the silliness of it. And I'd be totally remiss if I didn't mention the fight choreography in these movies because one, it's just that damn good. But also I think it's achieving something a little bit different than most action movies do with their fight choreography. A lot of modern ones like, you know, James Bond or Mission Impossible or Top Gun or something uh, use the sort of physicality of the action to sell, you know, how, how real it is for these characters. And you can sort of feel their pain and how, how, how just sort of physical of an experience it is for them. So it's mainly done for like tension and realism. But I think John Wick, there is an element of that for sure, but I also think that there's this other layer of it that doesn't get talked about all that often. People who don't like John Wick 4 have looked at sort of the, you know, um, 
the suspension of disbelief that you have to go to in some of these uh, stunt scenes. And I can totally get where they're coming from. I mean, Wick gets absolutely pounded in this. He falls off buildings, he crashes into cars, and, you know, after these seemingly, like, death, you know, inducing events, he's still able to carry on and go to the next thing. And I could see people making the argument, and people have, that this sort of just makes him Superman and it takes all of the tension out of it. But I totally disagree. I think that what these sequences are trying to do is less about realism and, and, and brutality, and more just about expression. It's bombastic, it's over the top, it's exaggerated, but there is an underlying truth to what's happening to John in these sequences, and it more has to do, I think, with the pain of his character than it has to do with anything that's literally happening on screen. Just like Chapter 2, which I still would say is probably my favorite in the, in the franchise, um, this sort of deals with that push and pull of John wants out, but he's also addicted to the action. He's addicted to being a killer because that's all he knows how to do. And that's a very painful thought for the character, and I think that idea of it being painful for him is expressed more through the action uh, and, and what happens to him physically than it is through dialogue or anything like that. And I think when you're able to take things about character and translate them into a more uh, cinematic experience like action cinema, I think you've got something really special and kind of genius on your hands. And I really, 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 really love the ending of this movie. Not the post credit scene, I don't really care about that. I'm, I'm kind of indifferent to it, I, I didn't hate it or anything, but it, it's not really anything I'm thinking about. No, but the actual ending and really kind of the arc for John Wick in this film, I just... I was so satisfied by it. I think for one, it's really the only way the story could go um, in, in this, and I also think that the way they did it was just such, such a beautiful and kind of abstract way to go about it, especially for a film that is as big and expensive as this film is. I really have only one issue with the film, and that's despite what I kind of said a little for a couple minutes ago about the way that they deal with John's character and pain, kind of telling that through the action. I do think the rest of the film is not as strong as the other entries in the franchise at telling just the basic story through the action. I just don't think it's quite as fluid as the way the other ones do it. There were a lot of times where I felt like this we were sort of jumping from set piece to set piece rather than the story kind of flowing naturally just through the set pieces and the way that the character moments sort of blend those together. And I think that as a result of it feeling a little choppy at times, it does feel like there are too many characters because some of the characters that exist aren't necessarily serving the story in like through the action in, every, in, a, in a meaningful way. And I also think it's a little bit too long. And for how long it is, some, it's, it's interesting that some characters and some aspects of the story that are interesting still feel like they're glossed over a little bit. Um, the biggest one for me would definitely have to be that the fact that Lawrence Fishburne's character is barely in this movie. He was one of my favorite parts of two, and at the end of three, he really has kind of an interesting setup for where his character could go in the future. And it's not really satisfying in the way it ends up for him. But despite the fact that I do have a couple of issues with it, I, I do think that the those issues could be less important for me on future rewatches because they serve the nature of this film being an epic. And I think that really is what makes it, I think that's really its biggest strength and why I love the film so much. It really is a love letter to the genre and to the stunt men and women who, you know, put their lives on the line to make it work. So I'm gonna give John Wick chapter four, four stars for the moment. I could see myself upping it. I did give chapter two the five stars. Um, whereas kind of the rest of them are fours for me. I would put this just below chapter two and then right above three, um, and then the, the first film at the bottom um, for me, if I'm ranking the franchise. Just again, I just feel like the first one's a little bit kind of the, more sim the most simplistic and grounded of the stories, but I really prefer the way that they sort of develop it and make it this like crime world in the rest of the films. And the action only gets better after the first one. So yeah, anyway, that's gonna do it for this review. Thank you guys so much for watching and being patient for this video to come out. Um, so for future videos coming up, I am, um, just after this films, I'm actually gonna film another video that's a little, like, recent pickups on physical media. I've never done a video like that, but I, I think it'd be fun to just kind of show you what I've gotten recently. And then I'm also going to be doing a video on the 10 movies that have scared me the most, so that'll be out pretty soon. Uh, definitely stay tuned for all that, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya!